for everybody. Let me get myself in the picture here. Hey, old guy jamming here. Today we're going to take a look at the Marshall DSL 20 compared to the JJ Jr. by Friedman. We'll go through the clean on both and then we'll go through the regular channel on both on the gain side, but the regular gain. And then we'll switch this over to the brown eye mode and we'll which is kind of a mid cut and then we'll shift this one over to the tone shift. So this will go over to the BE mode and this will go to tone shift. I won't make any EQ changes, but the uh, EQ is kind of set up about mid. Uh, both of them have very nice EQs. The resonance on the DSL is down to zero. This does not have a resonance. And there's a touch of reverb on the Marshall. And so I put a touch of reverb on the Friedman and used the presence on both. Anyway, you'll see the dials. The signal chain is my vintage series, Les Paul copy. This guy right here, phenomenal guitar. I did get rid of the other vintage series guitars, the Strat and the, the hollow body Telecaster. I ultimately got rid of those just as I continued to upgrade and get you know more guitars uh, there were some that just really resonated with me, and so you sell off those that you don't like or don't play as often. Um, and as you know, I recently got another Wolfgang and another Charvel, the Blue Frost Charvel, which after getting the locking nut deal fixed so it didn't sound like a sitar, is a really nice guitar. I saw one the other day called Chameleon. It's like root beer brown but almost then it changes to purple a little bit. It's a metal flake deal. It's gorgeous, but can't have them all. Uh, and the pick I'm using today is the Flow 3.0. Either the Flow 3.0 or the 2.0 are both fabulous. Still my favorite picks in the world. I go back and forth to others, but I am loving the way they just slide and glide right over the strings. It is great. Okay, and the also the Cab, we're going to play the Friedman through the Marshall cab, which has a G12 Creamback M, which is interesting because I was looking on the Sweetwater site, and when you buy a Friedman combo, it comes with a G12, um, G, yeah, G12 65M. Am I saying that right? I think so, yeah. But the Creamback, the Creamback, which is what I ended up putting in this cab because I liked, really liked the sound of it. So. <clears throat> We're getting the head played through a cab, an open back cab, which you would get if you bought the Friedman Combo. Same speaker. Cool, right? Yeah. So they're both going through this cab. And then I have the sound meter on as well. Pretty loud today, 104, 105 in the room, which was fun because for either one to sound really good, you need to have them up a bit. And I think you're going to be surprised. I'm not going to say any more. We'll get to it.
All right, so now I've got a couple of things to say about the amps. They are both, um, the Friedman is a little quieter at idle. If you have them up about the same volume, the Marshall makes more noise, uh, but not a tremendous amount, but it is a little more hissy in idle. The uh, Marshall has a high-low switch, so it has some attenuation. The Friedman does not. Still not a deal breaker because they both sound pretty good, even in full power mode down, uh, down not bedroom levels, but lower levels. They sound great, but you do have to get these things up for them to really come to life to get that power section involved enough that it doesn't have that martial fizzy characteristic that you hear so much about. You get this thing turned up and it's tight as a duck's butt, perhaps. Uh, so no power attenuation here, and it, this, the Friedman doesn't have a standby switch, which bothers me, but it's okay, I guess. But once it's on, it's on. Because sometimes I'll play for a little bit in the morning, and then I'll put the amp in standby, and I'll just let it cook um, until, you know, several hours later once I get done with my morning chores. And uh, I guess it's okay to do that. Uh, with the Friedman, just turn the volume on the guitar down, but it doesn't have a standby and that kind of bothers me. Uh, um, this has had a 12AY put in the preamp section. This has had nothing, I don't think I put anything in the preamp section because the gain is kind of low here. Anyways, um, lower. Now, let me know what you think. Uh, I think they're both great. There's more gain available on the Marshall. It has a wider gain availability it gets much hairier than the Friedman the Friedman the gain keeps coming up but it maintains that controlled tight characteristic at lower gain settings I think the Friedman is tighter like an orange amp is orange is famous for maintaining tightness even at low gain settings which is a lot of fun um, both there's plenty of bass on both there's plenty of brightness on both the EQ works great on both. Um, so, I, you know, that's about all I have to say. Um, but I think you, I think the Marshall also, I think it takes pedals better. So I was really surprised because it's twice the amount of money. This is about 700 or used to be. And this is about 1400. Now this is 1600. And this is probably eight. I don't know. Things are going up. I haven't priced it. But I was kind of surprised. I felt like this was going to stand out, and I don't think it really does. And I think this takes pedals more, and there's more gain available with the Marshall, which is really cool. Um, and it's half the price. Um, so if you got a bee in your bonnet to get a Friedman, then by all means go ahead and get one. But you might try the pedal version first. And if you still feel the Marshall isn't tight enough, then you can tighten it up with a flux drive or an OCD or some side of some sort of overdrive pedal that has the gain the volume up and the gain low. Uh, all right. So and then the clean channel, obviously you heard the clean on this is brighter. The Marshall's a brighter amp than this overall. But you could still find whatever flavor you wanted just by changing dials or moving some knobs on your guitar. Uh, great. Okay, so now I'm going to leave you with a blind test. I'm going to go out with a sound sample of both amps, but you're not going to know which it is. And then after that, I'll tell you which one was first and which was, was second. So you got to uh, come up with that your own idea before I get back. All right, here we go.
Okay, so what did you think? I'll tell you. Marshall was first. And the Friedman was then obviously second. So if you nailed it, good for you. Um, but I imagine, I would think that some of you found it a little confusing. That maybe you didn't know what was going on. But yes, the Marshall was first and the Friedman was second. I did make a few little tiny uh, EQ changes just to try and get them as close, not to try and trick you, but to try and get them as close to the same sound as possible just for that test. In the previous ones, previous clips, EQ was just at a good setting. I didn't try to match up the tones, but for the blind test, I did do a little moving around just to try and get them a little more close together. So did you get it right? Marshall was first, Friedman was second. All right, but is it worth the extra dough? I don't think so. But try the brown eye pedal as well. My buddy at Guitar Center said that's one of his favorite pedals. So you might try that. And then I keep hearing I got to get the Mesa Tone Burst. Keep uh, having a friend of mine, a viewer, keeps suggesting the Tone Burst pedal. So I put two bids out. Both were declined. Because, gosh, the, you know, Reverb, that might be a whole nother video. The prices on Reverb and Craigslist are not like used prices anymore. It's uh, 20 bucks up. The, the thing retails, the pedal, the Tone Burst retails for $160, $180. And people wanting, are wanting to get $140 for their used pedal. Well, that's not a screaming deal. That's, that's just like a sale at Guitar Center. So why would I bother? Okay? So used gear should be selling for used gear price, people. Get those prices down. Don't be greedy. All right. Well, I've said enough. Happy Father's Day to all you dads out there. And we'll see you next time.